Hi everyone, Teacher in the Tesla here. In this video, I'm going to expose the top Etsy tips nearly everyone hears when they open their Etsy shop, and whether they are true or not, and I'm also going to reveal to you my best kept secrets and truths I've learned by running my Etsy shop that's had over 12,000 orders and a quarter of a million dollars in sales in 2020 alone. Welcome to Teacher in the Tesla, where I discuss my top tips and advice for success on Etsy, passive income, financial success, and entrepreneurship. Now, I'm sure you've already heard the same boring, typical advice given to new Etsy sellers because it's nearly always the same. Have good photos, write a good item description, price your items competitively, add more listings, fix your SEO, and find a niche. And while these wouldn't be complete lies, I found that some of these matter sometimes and some of them don't ever matter at all. For example, you can have the best photo and the best SEO or search engine optimization in the text you use for the item. But at the end of the day, it still has to be for an item someone will actually want. The first thing no one tells you about selling on Etsy is that if you're new to Etsy, your main goal should be to remain on Etsy. It's Etsy's house, Etsy's rules, and staying on Etsy versus losing your shop and being kicked off is likely going to be one of the biggest keys to your success as customers love to purchase from shops that have reviews, lots of them. And if you're constantly starting a new shop, then you won't have those trusted reviews. However, don't have an irrational fear you're going to be kicked off just to keep you from starting. Simply read the seller's handbook and play by Etsy's rules. Make sure you don't use a VPN or a compromised computer, so don't hire a virtual assistant, as they might be using a computer that could have been used for an Etsy shop that was previously shut down. Is it really worth the risk? Now, when you open the shop, you will need to add a credit card. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it needs to be said, use a legit card. And again, don't let fear keep you from starting because selling on Etsy is an enormous opportunity. Start thinking of Etsy like you do social media. You need to feed the algorithm. Think about your experiences with social media. Take Facebook, for example. The more people like and comment on a post, the more the post is shown to more and more people. Algorithms love these kinds of changes and feedback a lot, so feed it. Etsy loves it when you do things like message your customers, ensure items are sent out as quickly as possible, get awesome reviews, add new items, tweak your photos or prices or change anything at all. But don't change the title of your items or the tags too often. You're actually better off coming up with something new entirely. And obviously it goes without saying, but again, don't go against Etsy's terms of service. First impressions are huge on Etsy. So most customers, most of the time, will purchase what they see in the first photo or photos. You might have 10 million options available within that listing, but most customers simply want what is in the photo. The item features in the photo will be the most popular, even if you offer 80 other options or variations. Don't ask how I know. And in fact, most customers don't look at your entire store or read your shop policies. In fact, most customers don't read it all. So put as much as you possibly can into your photos. Most customers don't know that there are item descriptions or even multiple photos if you have them. There are even many customers that think Etsy is one big store, so don't be surprised if they had no idea you have an individual shop with individual items. So focus on having a fantastic first photo, but make yours offer something completely different and unique from every other shop out there. So scammers, guys, this is something I always get asked by those who haven't sold online before or are considering selling on Etsy. They say, but don't people try to scam you? And it goes without saying, but also don't be a scammer because you'll get kicked off the platform. But there are a few different types of scammers out there for sure. There's the scammer that tries to copy or steal your designs, but whether you're selling on Etsy or another platform, that's always a possibility. And your items or designs will be copied when you're a successful seller. You need to also be able to deal with scammy shoppers. And luckily there are very, very, very few. They tend to target newer shops. So sorry guys, at least that was my experience. Now, on Etsy, a buyer can open a case against your shop if they believe the item wasn't shipped, they never received the item, or if the item they received isn't what they were expecting. Now, do know that if they say that the item wasn't received, but the tracking link sent the item, then the case is automatically closed. So that is a huge relief because that certainly happens and it's hard to know if the person is legitimately telling the truth or not. However, they can still leave you a poor review. So that of course is still an option. But also delivered items nearly always show up. So as a seller, you need to try to stall, stall, stall because that item will show up. So if they're asking you, why is my item not here? Where is it? 
you can always say, well, you know, have you checked with the post office? Then the next message you could send says, is the address correct? Now, the only thing you can truly be consistent with in Etsy, especially if you're not shipping your own items, is customer service. It needs to be the same for each and every order. So do your very best to be as consistent and as kind as you can. Even though this is through messaging, it's very tricky. But Recognize when someone is trying to take advantage of you and act appropriately. Use the website karencheck.com and you can check the review history that buyers have had. Perhaps they just go to every shop and purchase and then they leave a one-star review and hope, hope that everyone will give them a refund. So if that's the case, then you can also report them to Etsy buyer psychology. And this has really driven the success of my shop because I really try to picture what the customer is looking for and who my optimal customer is. And if they tend to be someone who is more of a trustworthy person. Now, this will take you some time and some experience selling on Etsy, but it's really worth it in the long run. Now, keep in mind also that you are not selling what you want. You might like it, but it's not likely going to be what you would want or would purchase for yourself. You have to, again, think about what someone else would want and that they absolutely cannot go without. Now, let's say you're selling mugs and you're selling a mug that says kindest forever. And you're also selling a mug that says thin patience. Which customer do you think is more likely to leave you a five-star review when shipping takes too long or the mug arrives broken? Think about that for a second. To have greater success in your Etsy shop in the long run, you need to spend some time creating a brand, even just a little bit to differentiate your shop from other shops. So you're going to need to add some logos, make some different templates, make something that's unique and offer excellent customer service, consistent customer service, because Etsy customers demand customer service. They absolutely crave it. And the more that you can do to create that brand and to have that consistent customer service is going to keep customers coming back to your shop again and again and to recommend it to their friends. If Etsy is testing anything once you open your shop, whether that's free shipping or adding a film to your listings, try it out. Always try to do anything Etsy is testing as your items will need to be pushed out to customers to see if their new test idea will work or not. They need data and they will reward you for being their guinea pig. I personally made a short film out of photos of my listings and a little bit of text and Etsy pushed out my listings big time, which drove a lot of sales for me during the summer of 2020 and beyond. For me, I really figured out that business is math and the profit is also in the volume. Sure, it sounds annoying to make only a dollar profit per item, but if the typical customer is buying 10 of the item and you have a thousand customers in a day, you're now making $10,000 a day. Business is math. Stop thinking about what you aren't making as a loss and focus on what you can and expand on that. Now, I personally don't make a dollar profit per item and I don't have my typical customer buying 10, but my typical customer is usually buying two or three or four or even five items now because they really love what I'm offering. So how can you Think about maximizing each customer's purchases. It's important to stop thinking about what you can't do or what you can't sell. Just look at what you can. Look at successful Etsy shops and emulate the ideas that make them successful. Maybe you can't sell your items for such a low price, but what other value can you offer that is unique? Etsy customers love Etsy because it is supposed to be unique. Can you personalize or customize your design? Can you offer a greater variety of sizes or colors than most shops are able or willing to offer? To get more sales fast, to increase your profit margin, and to have a coveted bestseller on Etsy, you need to sell multiple items from one listing. All right, so let's take a deep dive into the shop Mod Party. And as you can see, they have nearly a million sales, 852,000. And I'm sure by the morning, there'll already be probably another thousand more, which is totally nuts and phenomenal and super inspiring. So there's 1,676 items in the shop. And just even scrolling through, you can start to see that there's a lot of personalized items in here. All right. So if I click on this listing, Retro Bachelorette Party Shirts, and now I see that there's shirts that say babe and there's shirts that say bride. Now, when I look at what is actually offered here, there's different sizes of shirts. I have small, medium, large, or extra large, and double XL. But when I click on the design, there's actually really two different shirts that are offered within this same listing. So it's not just the bride shirt, it's 
also the babe shirt, right? So both of these designs are offered within this one listing. So look at all these photos here that are really working to maximize this to really convince you. And also this film. Now we've done 10 tips, you guys. And so my bonus tip for you is to maximize every listing as much as possible. The goal is to keep customers to stay in the same place with less of an opportunity to click away as there's a lot of competition on Etsy and to change their minds. And while many of my items are purchased as a single item, I really try to ensure that I've offered as many possible things within that one listing so they're very unlikely to click away. Do I have a film? Do I have the shipping costs? Do I have the item description? Do I have how long it's going to take for it to arrive? All of these things, you can put these things in your photo and in your item description. And if you have these in your photos, you've completed the photos, you've written up everything you possibly can, all of the possible colors and shown swatches, you are going to start to see an enormous difference in your sales. So maximize every listing so that that 20 cents you are paying for that listing is absolutely paying for itself. Make that real estate, that 20 cent real estate work for you and it will completely change your Etsy shop. Well, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching and can't wait to see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video and you find it helpful, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can find out when the next video, how to get from zero to 10,000 sales as fast as possible on Etsy will be out. Hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.